Um, our next speaker is uh, the director of the Department of Environmental Management, uh, Janet Coit. Senator Conley talked about investing in the green economy, and I think Director Coit will be discussing the uh, green bond initiative that is going to be on the ballot um, this November, and which is another equi priority. Um, uh, Janet Coit has been director of DEM since 2011, um, but she is a lifelong environmentalist. Before she went to DEM, she was the Rhode Island State Director of the Nature Conservancy, uh, which has for decades been a member of the Environment Council of Rhode Island. Uh, when we have uh, Director Coit speak at these uh, ECRI events, uh, she is among family. Director Coy. Director Coy really is going to address you. Yeah, don't <laughs> worry, I'm not going to talk again. Uh, but she has very graciously allowed me one more moment because just as I was being seated, um, I noted the, uh, another uh, great environmental advocate among us who I wanted to recognize um, from the Senate, and that's Senator Janine Calkin. So I just wanted to do that. Thank you. Good afternoon, and happy Earth Day, happy Earth Week. I hope everyone got out of this beautiful spring weekend, enjoyed some of the uh, lovely places, and connected with nature here in Rhode Island. It is a great pleasure to join the Environment Council of Rhode Island today. Thank you, Jerry, and all ECRI members. I'm here today on behalf of Governor Gina Raimondo, and I wanted to acknowledge both Carol Grant, the Energy Commissioner, who also works uh, for the Governor, and Jeff Deal, the head of the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank, who are also here today. I'm so proud to work uh, for Governor Raimondo and to lead the Department of Environmental Management. And the work we do is uh, vital to, as Senator Conley said, to the economy, but to the quality of life here in Rhode Island. Um, what we do can be breathed, walked upon, eaten, um, enjoyed, and it really matters in a tangible way to every single community in Rhode Island. Governor Raimondo has been very focused on promoting programs that make a healthier Rhode Island, including strengthening our resilience, um, championing uh, so some of our natural assets, um, promoting local food, um, and working with all of you to continue the headway that we've made to clean up our waterways, remediate brownfield sites, and promote active, healthy communities. I just came from an event in Pawtucket where many of, uh, I see many people who were there um, that was about the governor's climate resiliency action strategy. And on this rainy day, we reflected on how the Blackstone River had flooded um, several times, but dramatically so in uh, 2005, and about the need for green infrastructure, uh, for um, retrofitting old, outdated infrastructure in our cities and along our waterways, in promoting public health and addressing the many aspects of climate change that threaten the places that we love and threaten our communities. So that's been part of several executive orders that the governor um, has issued about climate change. But I'm, um, so let me also say it's an honor to be here with my fellow, oh, it's Senator Conley and Representative McEntee and all of the legislators in the room. I think it's a credit, oh, and Senator Conley's gonna wanna get back up because Senator Oyer is here now too from Newport. <laughs> Welcome. Um, I, I honestly think that when I started seven years ago, we didn't have as many legislators in the room, and I think that is a credit to um, ECRI and the communities and the people who care so much about the environment that we have this really stalwart group of champions. Um, Senator Conley did in his first year sponsor the Resilient Rhode Island Act, and that has been a really important bill, and he's promoted clean energy and been terrific to work with. From the first time I, I spoke with Representative McEntee, it was about uh, Petaquamska Cove, the Narrow River, habitat restoration, um, things, uh, stormwater mitigation, things that we could work on together in her community to improve the coastal habitat. So I'm privileged to be on the panel with both of you. So many of us are wearing these buttons, 
Uh, the, I'm here today to talk about the Green Economy and Clean Water Bond, and that is the $48.5 million bond that the governor included in her budget that continues some of our proven investments in uh, open space, farmland protection, um, brownfields remediation, improving outdoor recreation, parks. It also includes uh, funds that we've put to tremendous use cleaning up our waterways to, for the infrastructure bank um, to continue improving our wastewater treatment and importantly our stormwater mitigation and treatment. So critical funding for the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank uh, is included that will leverage federal funding. And then it includes some new components around climate resilience. So while we're about to announce an action strategy, we have uh, many actions underway and funding that's needed to continue to mitigate risk to uh, wastewater treatment systems, um, to protect our vulnerable coast coasts, to promote green infrastructure. So that bond is uh, very important to continuing the, the work that we do together. And you can see it in every single community across Rhode Island. A couple weeks ago, again, I was with several of you uh, wonderful people in the room at a Winascatucket River event uh, celebrating progress over the last 25 years in that corridor, participating in a cleanup, and then going to places that had formerly places like Riverside Mills Park, places like Lincoln Lace and Braid, places like the fish ladder behind Rising Sun Mills, uh, places like the water fire building, like the steel yard, and just thinking about in the last 25 years, often with the money through these bonds, how we've invested in cleaning up places, creating parks, creating vibrant new enterprises, and then restoring habitat um, and, and promoting green infrastructure. And there's a bike path that can conveniently connects all these communities and working with the City of Providence, working with all of the groups in the room that is putting these bond investments to work in a way that really does promote the economy and the health of our communities. So I can't say enough about how important it is right now to talk to the legislative leaders about this bond, uh, which once we get it to the people, is they're always supported tremendously in our urban areas, in our rural areas. People in Rhode Island care about the bay, the rivers, the forests, and they always vote to support these bonds. So please participate in advocating for the bond. Um, please continue to get stay involved. Um, I just wanted to, to close by making two points, which is one, a lot of the bills that this legislature has passed have um, promoted important work at DEM, and the Green Buildings Act, um, the cesspool phase-out law, and the point of sale bill, the, um, the work that you did to create the infrastructure bank, the work you've done on food waste and composting, all of these bills are so critical in moving us forward in a positive direction. And so I really salute the work you're doing here, which of course is so important to setting the agenda in the uh, departments that work with you. So as always, thank you to ECRI for your advocacy, your tenacity. Um, the way as an umbrella organization, you connect many communities and many organizations, and you help us create an effective agenda, which includes this very important green economy and clean water bond of the governors. She has promoted these bonds every um, two years and has pledged to continue these kind of investments because they really pay off for the economy, the environment, and the well-being of our communities. So it's kind of a triple win when you promote these bonds, and I hope you'll all uh, join ECRI in advocating fiercely for the green, green economy and clean water bond. And thank you so many of you in the room who've already been doing that, and to Topher Hamlet and Save the Bay for these buttons. Thank you.